The first reading today is taken from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 to 9, and can be found on page 657 in your Pew Bible. God's servant is endowed with God's spirit in order to bring justice to the nations. The servant will not exercise authority, boistry, or with violence, nor will weariness even prevent the fulfilling of the servant's task. God's old promises have been fulfilled. The servant's new assignment is to bring light to the nations. And the, re <clears throat> the reading begins. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Here ends the first reading. And please read responsively with me Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you guys, gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon shake like a cat, and now burning like a wildfire. The Lord makes Lebanon shake like a cat, and now burning like a wildfire. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writh and the strips the forest bare, and in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. And the second reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43, and can be found on page 1002 in your pew Bible.
Peter crosses the sharp religious boundary separating Jews from Gentiles and proclaims the good news of God's inclusive forgiveness in Jesus' name to Cornelius, a Roman centurion. As a result of Peter's preaching, Cornelius and his family become the first Gentiles to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And the reading begins. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to justify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receive forgiveness of sins through his name. This ends the second reading. Gospel according to Matthew, the third chapter. That Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I apologize. I need to be a dad for a second. Liam, sit up. Sorry. So think about this imagery here. The heavens were open. Sounds pretty passive. I mean, when you look at the Greek, it's like there's no exclamation marks. I mean, it's not, not like the heavens were ripped open. I mean, it's just the heavens were open and the Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove. Pretty passive. It seems that God really isn't that ecstatic over the baptism. It's kind of a toned down reaction. He was well pleased. 
I mean, why is that? I mean, shouldn't the heavens be just like rocking in celebration? That's the best I can dance. I Trust me, it's better than I ever did before. Uh, you know, not exactly. Because, you see, this baptism, when Jesus baptized, basically it was his commitment ceremony, you might say. So, what is baptism exactly? Well, I'm not an expert on every religion, but what I've learned is some different ideas that churches have about baptism. Apparently, traditionally, I don't know if it's still this way, but traditionally Catholics have believed that baptism was necessary for salvation. They would baptize a baby ASAP. Or, I've actually heard of a How about that? Okay. I was afraid to have it too close because it might sound like I'm talking right into it. So, so I've actually heard of priests who were in the delivery room when there were complications with the baby. I mean, sitting there like Johnny Bench, you know, just to baptize the baby right there just in case. And it's because the theology, or their theology is that anybody who dies, who has not been baptized, even a baby, is doomed to eternity in purgatory. Now they believe this because they believe that everybody's born with original sin. The original sin between, you know, Adam and Eve eating the apple, not listening to God. And so you have to to be forgiven of that sin. Now think about that. Being born already with your back against the wall. Then there's other views of baptism. Now, some churches believe in only adult baptism. Uh, they'll call it a believer's baptism. Because that's how Jesus was baptized that they have to make the conscious choice to choose God. Okay? Another church believes in baptism of the dead. So you could be baptized, but you could also go and then be baptized for those who have died before, who hadn't been baptized. Several churches believe that if you're not that you're not baptized unless they do it. Because otherwise it wasn't done right. Therefore it doesn't count. Now I know this one for sure because I was, uh, when I was doing chaplaincy, I, I didn't have uh, a Sunday service that I had to preside over. So we went to different churches for fun. And we went to one neighborhood church, a non-denominational church. It was interesting. But even me, as a fully ordained pastor, uh, if I were to want to join that church, become a member, I'd have to get re-baptized. And I'm like, eh, no. No. I, I, I told the pastor, he and I got one good. And, but they, their belief was you had to be baptized in their church in order for it to stick. Now, others, other churches will believe that uh, for a baptism to be valid, the, 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 bat, the person being baptized has to be immersed underwater. And that sprinkling and just pouring water on the head, not enough. It doesn't work. It doesn't count. I had a person ask me that one time. A lady was Baptist when I was doing chaplaincy. She said that she... she she, she believed that being baptized, you had to be immersed. Now, this is Colorado in the middle of winter. Okay, 
like today, I told her, I said, you know what? That's great. If you want to be baptized by immersion, that's great. We can go down to the pond. We can knock a hole in it. I'll bring an axe. We'll knock a hole in the water. I'll dunk you. She's like, no, no, that's fine. So, the problem with all of this is, once again, it's humans being legalistic and trying to determine what the magical procedure is for salvation. That if you have to do A, B, in order to get C, A plus B equals C. It takes it back to what you do. My seminary professor, Jim Nestigan, would say that this is making our salvation all about our actions, our procedures, and it negates the free will, the free grace, the gift that comes through Jesus Christ. In other words, the power doesn't come from what we do. The power comes from Christ. Do you really think that Jesus cares how we're baptized? Do you think when you can lead an exemplary life and a life in faith, a believer your entire life and dying in the faith that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you go to heaven and God say, eh, sorry, you were sprinkled. <laughs> You're out of here. Does that make sense? Sounds pretty ridiculous to me. So I ask again, what is baptism? Now, when Jesus was baptized, he was absolutely right when he told John that, or when John told Jesus that I should, or you should be baptizing me. That John should not be baptizing Jesus. But what John was doing, in fact, and what Jesus wanted done was that John was anointing Jesus for the task ahead. Anointing is conferring a blessing on a person in preparation for the task ahead. When the Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove, that was the anointing of Jesus, the fulfillment of Scripture just like you'd find as spoken in Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is, <coughs> sorry, still getting over the cold a little bit. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. You see, God is pleased because Jesus has cho chosen to live according to God's will for his life. Jesus hasn't done anything yet. This is the beginning of his ministry. Not a single miracle, not a single healing. But he's headed in the right direction. What baptism is, is to commit our lives according to God's will for our lives. Now that sounds great if you're an adult and you want to go and be baptized. But what about a baby? You know what? I'm glad you asked. When baptizing a baby, I warn parents that they are the ones making a commitment to raise that child in the faith, to take them to worship, to place the scriptures in their hands. That's them 
they're making that commitment before God. They're committing to raise that child in a way that is pleasing to God, according to God's will for that child's life. That's why I tell them, don't baptize your child just because you want to make grandma happy. You baptize your child because you are willing to make this commitment to raise this child. That you're committing yourself to the challenge. And that's what baptism is for all of us. Now, for some of us, for those of us that were baptized as infants, our parents committed to raise us in the faith. If we were baptized older as a choice of our own, we committed ourselves to live our lives according to that faith. Now, I don't remember my baptism. I was baptized as a baby. But you know what? I was raised in the faith. There has never been a time in my life that I did not know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And if I'm concerned about because I can't remember my baptism, I can remind myself every time I walk in here and I place my finger in that baptismal font, make the sign of the cross on my forehead, and I can recommit myself each and every time to live my life according to the will of God. And simply put, to act justly, to act faithfully and righteously is to act according to God's will. Would you please pray with me? Dear Lord, we come to you today, Lord, help us to just recommit ourselves to you. To live our lives according to your will. And Lord, we need your help. We need your guidance to determine what that is. Lord God, please guide us in our minds and our hearts to do what is right. To be just. To be faithful. Not only in the way we treat, uh, act towards you, Lord, but the way we act towards each other. And always put you first and have our lives reflect that. In your name we pray. Amen.